background. So I grew up in a very strong Christian family, although my parents only really came to have a relationship with Jesus in their, in their late 30s. But it made a huge difference in our family's life. And just one example is the way they modeled for us how to live a life of faith. They honestly never had very much money, but over and over again, I saw God's faithfulness to our family. And I also saw their generosity and how freely they gave of their time, but of, of everything, just always wanting to be a part of God's work. So I had this great start, right? But in my young adult years and young middle age years in the 60s and 70s, I sort of got to thinking that, you know, I knew what was best for my life and wasn't going to church much and really dumb. But anyways, eventually I finished my education and I took my first professional job in Tennessee. And so, wow, this was great. Seemed like a good time to put down roots. So I bought a house. Well, but then six months later, I was offered a much better job in another state. But that's no problem, right? I'm single. Just sell the house and move, OK? Except that no matter what I tried, no matter what my realtor tried, we could not sell that house. We could not rent that house. For the older people in the congregation, the year was 1981, the recession of 1981, and nothing was moving. But I had to move. So soon I had to move while I'm paying a mortgage on a house in one state renting a place in another state with a beginner's salary and very, very, almost no savings because of years in school. Month by month, I watched my financial situation deteriorate and my anxiety grow. But now some good news. See, I hadn't been attending church for a while, but I started going back now. And I found that singing the hymns that I had grown up with just meant so much and brought tears to my eyes. The sermons and the scripture reading started to penetrate my mental and spiritual haze, fog. Looking back, I can see that the financial fear wasn't the only reason I began to seek after God again, but it, it was a big part of it. So one day, I got something from my church in the mail. It was a letter and a card about tithing for the upcoming year. Now, I put a few dollars in the plate each week, but I mean, I couldn't give more. I was in this terrible deficit every month. There was no way. But I kept looking at that card, and I remembered the generosity of my parents. And I asked myself, you know, when's the last time you gave money to anything. See, the thing was, I wanted, I really wanted to give more, but I was scared. But I know the Holy Spirit was working because even though everything in me said, you, you don't do this, you can't do this, you can't honor this, I finally filled out that card and the next day was Sunday and when the offering plate came around with my heart, this is absolutely true, I remember this, my heart racing and my hand shaking, I put that card in the plate. And I wish I could tell you that I had this wonderful epiphany of joy and peace, but that's not what happened. I felt shaky all day. I felt shaky when I went to bed. I felt shaky when I woke up on Monday to go back to work. I'd made a commitment that I couldn't keep. So I worked all day Monday, now we're getting to the moment, and I was starting to leave for home, it was close to five, and the phone in my office rang, and it was my realtor. We've rented your house! She was so excited, and she's telling me all the details and everything that's going on, and I'm not paying attention. My mind is wandering, partly just the sheer release of the tension 
But also, I just couldn't get over the coincidence, the coincidence of the timing. And when I drove home, I said my first really very personal prayer in my newly reestablished relationship with Jesus. It wasn't very theologically deep, but it was something like, this is a little flashy, Lord, but, but I'll take it. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now, of course, God doesn't always work in immediate dramatic ways in our lives. He doesn't always answer prayers real quickly. And in that case, I hadn't even really prayed. We have to learn in our faith formation to trust him. Even when we don't see answers right away, we have to be persistent in prayer. But this event shaped me to follow my parents' example to trust that God always would provide for me and, and to live out the great joy of giving generously for God's glory. There's so many verses in scripture that speak to this, but I thought I'd just leave you with two. Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything. <laughs> but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then 1 Timothy 6, 18, 19, Paul said to Timothy, command them, meaning us, God's people, to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. P.S. The house was rented for two years and then it sold. Thanks be to God. Thank you. <laughs>